Hey guys, welcome back. This is Gargi. So today we are going to study about the rheological properties of dental materials. So what is rheology? Rheo means flow and logy means study. So basically rheology is the study of flow or deformation of matter. So rheological properties include flow, creep, viscosity, and viscoelasticity now what is flow in dentistry we use this term to describe the rheology of amorphous substances like waxes and this term is generally related to liquids next we have creep creep is defined as the time dependent plastic deformation of a material under a static load or constant stress so basically when there is application of a constant stress for a very long time there is accumulation of strain which results in deformation over a period of time now let us make this clear through an example in silver amalgam mercury is a component having melting point of minus 38.83 degree celsius when it is combined with silver alloy the melting range of silver amalgam is reduced and some of its components have melting points close to those of the oral cavity then during intake of hot food followed by mastication the constant load of mastication causes creep in the amalgam which leads to marginal ditching or breakdown Now next is viscosity. What is viscosity? We know that it is the resistance of a liquid to flow. And this resistance is controlled by the internal frictional forces of liquids. The unit of measurement of viscosity is centipoise. Next is viscoelasticity. What is viscoelasticity? It is the property of materials that exhibit both viscous and elastic characteristics when undergoing deformation. The examples for this are alginates and rubber-based impression materials. Now, what is thixotropy? As a general rule, the viscosity of most liquids decreases with an increase in temperature. Sometimes the viscosity also decreases when there is application of external pressure so the liquids that exhibit this property are said to be thixotrophic so now what are the types of fluid behavior first is newtonian or ideal liquids second is plastic liquids third is pseudo plastic or shear thinning liquids and fourth is dilatant or shear thickening liquids So now let us study them in detail. First is Newtonian or ideal liquids. So these are the liquids which have a constant viscosity under all stress conditions. So whatever may be the condition, they have a constant viscosity. The examples are water and newly mixed zinc phosphate cement. Next is plastic liquids. So these liquids are plastic or rigid until a certain yield strength is applied to them. So for them to flow, we have to apply a initial yield strength. And these liquids are also said to exhibit thixotrophic properties. Next, we have pseudo plastic or shear thinning liquids. So these liquids show a decrease in viscosity with an increase in shear rate so when shear stress is applied there is a decrease in viscosity in these liquids the examples are endodontic cements monophase rubber impression materials polycarboxylate cements and non water mixed glass ionomer cements last is dilatant or shear thickening liquids so these liquids will have a increase in viscosity 
when the shear stress is increased. The example is fluid denture base resins. Now let us summarize all the type of fluid behaviors through this graph. So first are the Newtonian fluids. Here you can see that whatever be the stress, they have constant viscosity. In pseudoplastic, you can see a decrease in viscosity with an increase in shear stress. In dilatant, you can see increase in viscosity with increase in the shear stress. In plastic liquids, you can see that a certain initial yield strength is required to make them flow. So that's all for this video. I'll be covering other properties in our upcoming videos. So if you are watching this video, do like, comment below, share this with your friends and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Also, press the bell icon if you don't want to miss any updates from my channel. Thank you.